Look at that. Good evening, Periscope. I was ready then. As soon as the 10 p.m. clock rang, <laughs> 10 p.m., I was like, bang, get straight in there. Lucinda's here. Good evening, Lucy. Good to see you. Um, Judy's here. Judy, that's a new name. Don't recognize that. Let us know where you are viewing from. Going to give people a, uh, a few minutes to join, as per usual. Um, good evening. Yeah, tonight's Wednesday night, guys. It means it's book club. For those who don't know me, my name is Ross. I'm an actor. Uh, I'm a voiceover artist as well from uh, Manchester here in the UK and I scope twice a week, once on a Monday, once on a Wednesday, Wednesday nights book club, Monday nights something called motivation and mind hacks, hacks to help you get further in your life faster and your acting career if you're an actor, but if you're not an actor, it doesn't matter, stay on this scope anyway because a lot of what we talk about is universal, it applies to absolutely every single human being on the planet, um, but some of the stuff is more acting related than others, but it's also applicable. Nina, good evening, great to see you. Um, I want to apologise, I say I scope twice a week, Monday night, I didn't do a periscope did I, because I completely forgot, I was interviewing um, my casting director Michael Jackson for Act On This TV episode 3, so I also run a website guys, actonthis.tv, and that uh, hosts podcasts and live video broadcasts like this, like periscope, recordings of all these periscopes, as well as um, live like well, TV episode style interviews with some of the biggest names in the acting industry and I was interviewing Michael Jackson not the king of pop the king of casting <laughs> from Beverly Keogh casting um, a huge casting directors uh, casting house up here they cast things like Scott and Bailey the BAFTA winning Happy Valley Last Tango in Halifax they've just done something for ITV called Paranoid which is being filmed at the moment huge huge things and I got Mark, uh, Malcolm I nearly said that who's Malcolm I got Michael on for a uh, for an act on this TV episode filmed it it looks awesome he's got some amazing advice it was super frank questions that other people might be scared to ask I just asked Miranda good evening um, you know lots of questions around new talent how you know how and why new talent find it hard to be seen what they're doing at Beverly Keogh casting to see new talent you know is it casting actors being lazy is there other things behind that um, how you can optimize your chances of being seen. It was just super frank, brutal at times, <laughs> but um, but it was really, really good uh, interview. That's gonna be available on actonthis.tv on the last Friday of this month. Every, uh, Linda, uh, Lucy says, uh, I've got, I'm going rubbish with names tonight, Lucy. I nearly called you Linda. Uh, it's because it's Lucinda. Uh, it says, he's lovely, look forward to seeing it. Yeah, it's um, it's a great interview, honestly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch these Act On This TV episodes now once a month on the last Friday of the month, so it's something for everyone to look forward to. So that one will be out in like, what, like just under two weeks. Uh, I'm only about 20 minutes through of the edit. Christos is here, good to see you mate, Good. Uh, thanks for joining us. So tonight guys, this is an exciting scope, right? This is it's pretty cool, I've got something to announce at the end of this that we've kind of touched on in the, in the past book club scope on this book that I'm going to launch officially tonight. This book that we're looking at for tonight and last week is called Dear Me, A Letter to My 16 Year Old Self. And it's a compilation of super famous, rich, talented, successful people. Um, Gary's here. Good to see you, Gary. Um, super, yeah, successful people. They've all written letters to their 16-year-old selves. We've got actors in there like Hugh Jackman, Gillian Anderson, uh, Gene Hackman. Uh, who else have we got? All the ones we looked at uh, last week. Uh, Toby Jones. James Avery, who was uh, Phil Phil Banks on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Hunter Gibson's here. Good evening. Good to see you. Um, so, yeah, there was, there's loads of letters in here that are just you know super inspiring that they've written to their 16-year-old selves. We looked at five last week. We're looking at another five tonight. And then I'm announcing something at the end of this that I need everybody watching to get involved with because we want to, well, I want to create our own version of this within the Acts on This community. I want to get you guys published um, in an ebook that I want to create where we all write letters to our 16 year old selves and we distribute that throughout the acting industry um, so that other people can benefit from our knowledge because let's face it our 16 year old selves can't benefit from the knowledge that we now have up here so um, there's plenty of people who can though so I'm going to be telling you guys how you can get involved with that at the end of this scope so tonight's five guys that I've chosen they're not random they've all got a great little uh, little tale in them to tell we are looking at uh, Kathleen Turner, great actress. If you're young, you might not know her though. She played, um, who remembers Who Framed Roger Rabbit? How good was that? They don't make films like that anymore. Give me some hearts if you liked Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It was a top film. Um, she played the voice of Jessica Rabbit. 
Chris Hosley saying yes. Honestly, film, you know films in the 80s? I'm 34 now. So, Miranda says, so good. Gary says, yeah. They were just brilliant, weren't they? You know, like the original Ghostbusters, Gremlins, E.T., Batteries Not Included, Robocop, Rocky. You just don't make films like that. Am I being, like, nostalgic? Were they not as good as I remember them? Because we do that sometimes. Oh, were, were they really that good? Romancing the Stone, exactly. Uh, Hunter says, yeah. Uh, she was in Romancing the Stone, yeah. Um, Kathleen Turner. Um, great actress. That was the first film I watched at the cinema. Christos says, no, you're spot on, man. Saw her in the graduate play too. Excellent. So yeah, I, I don't know. I look, I look back so fondly at those those old films in the eighties. Remember the first film I ever watched at the cinema? I think. Do you know what? I think it might. <laughs> it wasn't a cartoon. I think it might have been Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Michael Jackson's uh, Moonwalker was awesome. Eighties films were all very distinctive. Says so on that. Like, yeah, they really were. But that was awesome. Michael Jackson was a bit of a hero of mine growing up. So we're looking at Kathleen Turner's letter to a sixteen-year-old self. We're looking at Stephen King, literally like the king of horror, his letter to his 16-year-old self. Uh, we're going to be looking at James Woods. He was an Academy Award winning, uh, no, Academy Award nominee and multi-Emmy uh, and Golden Globe winning actor, best known for roles in films like Once Upon a Time in America, Nixon and Salvador. He's got a lot of good advice. I liked his letter to his 16-year-old self. Gene Hackman, uh, we're looking at his letter. Um, and we're also looking at Alan Rickman who, uh, you know, bit of a ledge, loved him in Harry Potter, legend. Um, so yeah, we're looking at those five, and then I'm going to uh, introduce something that I want you guys to get involved with at the end of that. So if everybody is, uh, is comfortable, let's get cracking with Kathleen Turner, aka Jessica Rabbit in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Let's look at her letter. I've got to find it first. Here it is. There we go. Highlighted. What I like about these as well, some of them are types, like Kathleen's is, but some of them are handwritten as well. So you get to see like JK Rowling's handwriting. Not that good. Yeah, yeah, she can obviously write very, very well. Uh, so that's interesting. So Kathleen writes this, guys. See if you resonate with this. See if you can figure out why I chose this one. So she says, Dear 16 year old me, I'm writing to you from 40 years past by. I love your passion and confidence. And I want to tell you that you are right. You are about to have your world destroyed. The safety and security you feel now taken away. Know that you've been taught well though, both in character and tools for learning. The, lesson, the lessons you have been given about love, loyalty, fairness and determination will pay off. A few cautions though, do not let your sense of, uh, do not let do not let your sense of humour of the absurd slip. Try to remember that what is happening at the moment is only that, a moment. Try the count to five rule before reacting, before exploding, count to five. You'll be told that your dreams are absurd, childish fantasies. Don't believe anyone however however much they mean well trust that core that tells you your dreams are true this is very hard because you've no way of knowing yet that they are but rely on that darn stubbornness you are told is a fault value loved ones and let them know you do you will never be completely alone Give freely without considering the cost. It will never be too much. Finally, love yourself. No one will be a harsher critic. So give yourself a break, okay? Kathleen Turner. So what a, what a great letter that is. What, what were the bits that you like the most out of that? The thing for me, why I chose it really, that bit there where she goes, you'll be told that your dreams are absurd, childish fantasies. Don't believe anyone, however much they mean well. And this is, the, is something that I, I coach a lot of people on when I, I do the Bulletproof Actor training that, that I do, an online program that I, that I yeah, take people through. And that's to not allow other people's limiting beliefs to be forced onto you. And then your subconscious starts honouring those 
and then they become beliefs of your own that were never meant to be your own. So people do it by meaning well. So they'll go, oh, right, well, yeah, you know, well, I tried to put on a play once and it didn't work and I just lost loads of money and uh, it didn't really work for me. So don't you do that because I just want to save you some time. It's really, really hard. Don't bother. And then you go, oh, right, okay, then it must be right then because it didn't work for them. Obviously, it's not going to work for me. And then you don't end up following through on what you originally wanted to do because you've honoured someone else's belief that was formed from a past experience of theirs, fair enough. Um, but it's not your past experience, so you should never honour other people's limiting beliefs. Ultimately, you've got enough of your own, really, if you're a human being. Um, so don't let other people, no matter how well they mean, talk you out of that. Um, so let me know what you thought was the best part of that. There's some other great advice you had in there. Value loved ones, let them know you do. Something I don't think, you know, I don't think I do enough sometimes. Um, give freely without considering the cost. Um, and finally, love yourself. Give yourself a break. Sounds cliched as hell, but so many of us, as human beings and actors, just don't give ourselves enough of a break. Chris Stone Films is in the house. Chris is my director, filming that interview the other night with Michael. Thank you, Chris. You just missed Kathleen Turner, AKA Jessica Rabbit out of Who Framed Roger Rabbit's letter but you're in time for Stephen King's letter to himself. Gary says, give freely, I love that. Honestly, the minute you start giving with no expectation of return, your life will change instantly. David's here, David Tyson, good to see you, David. Um, yeah, super, super key point there. When you don't look at life transactionally, you just show up positively on a daily basis and just give your best without expecting anything in return get given loads of shit without asking for it <laughs> trust me it works so Stephen King's letter here's Stephen King's letter that we're going to look at this is Stephen King's letter to his 16 year old self written in June 2010 good to be here says David excellent good to have you here David Fanny's here as well she just joined Fanny you've just joined in time to hear Stephen King's letter to his 16 year old self he starts it off you all know Stephen King the, the horror writer yeah dear me I'm writing to you from the year 2010, when I've reached the totally ridiculous age of 62. In order to give you a piece of advice, it's simple really, just five words. And I didn't know this about Stephen King. Stay away from recreational drugs. You've got a lot of talent and you're going to make lots of people happy with your stories. But, unfortunate but true, you're also a junkie waiting to happen. If you don't heed this letter and change the future, at least 10 good years of your life, from age 30 to 40, are going to be a kind of dark eclipse where you disappoint a lot of people and fail to enjoy your own success. You'll also come close to dying on several occasions. Do yourself a favour and enjoy a brighter, more productive world. Remember that like love, resistance to temptation makes the heart grow stronger. Stay clean, best regards, Stephen King. I didn't know that about Stephen until I read this letter earlier on. I had no idea that he, he might be, that's probably obviously dead common knowledge I'm guessing, but I had no idea about that at all. For God's sake, I bought the book and think I got it in the post today, says Christos. Awesome. Nice one. Well, there you go. This is the last night we're looking at this, and I've only, I will have only read 10 letters out of it, Christos. And there's like there's got to be like 40 or 50 in there. Fanny said, wow. Yeah, I didn't know, Fanny, that Stephen King was a... Um, I mean, what a genius mind. Great writer. But, I mean, maybe that's where a lot of the dark horror comes from, his experience of drugs and, and losing 10 years of his life and stuff like that. I don't know what, what age... It started up in his 30s, he's probably had a lot of success by that. Ultimately though, um, I chose that letter not because we're all drug addicts and we're all going get, to get into, into dodgy things, but to remind yourself to not let temptation ruin your own success in whatever way. And for me, I mean, I, I relate to that a little bit because in my 20s, one piece of advice I wish I could give myself in my 20s was, mate, stop running away from your life. Stop going out of the weekend, try to live the life that you feel you should have, like drinking in all these clubs, spending hundreds of pounds on bottles of vodka and thinking that you are it because you feel you know, inferior or whatever in other parts of your life. So you try to live up to this weekend millionaire kind of status. I threw away 10 years of my life 
doing that. Whereas I could have been working on productive things in my business, my acting career. I just didn't have the knowledge though. And I needed to go through that to realize that what I was doing was wasting my time completely. Um, Patrick says, gets that. Um, yeah, it's like, so maybe you do have to go through it. Uh, Crystal says, especially with all the trends and the norms that are unfortunately part of our culture. Yeah, it, you know, it was totally normal. I honestly, this is how limited, I remember saying this sentence in my 20s, guys, and this is all about temptation, going out and wanting to feel good and drink and get drunk and chat up with girls and stuff. I honestly said, um, I don't understand how people can go out and have a good time if they don't drink. I mean, honestly, and I genuinely meant it. I, I looked around me and thought, how do people come out and like and just not get drunk? I mean, how do they enjoy themselves genuinely? I look back and I'm like, wow, I can't believe I said that. Um, but Fanny says, of course you need to go through it, experience. True, did the same in my 20s, says David. It's crazy, isn't it? And then Stephen King obviously did that in his 30s. Once he'd had the success, the reason I was doing it is because I'd had no success. So I was running away from that and just trying to feel good about myself. A simply growing up, uh, says Topper Mouse. What does every kid say to an elder when they are growing up? Well, they, you think you know it all as a kid, don't you? People unable to relax and have fun without drink is a British problem generally. Um, says Hunter, yeah, honestly, I really think it is. I, I just don't, I mean, I'm probably not drinking six years now. Um, I've had like a glass of wine at a meal now and again. Um, but I just like look back and go, God, I don't recognize myself. Never been in a drink, says Gary. Um, but it was that temptation, yeah, you know, because it does make you feel good. There's nothing, you know, it, it, no denying it. It's a nice feeling when you're a bit merry and you're a bit drunk and, you know, you let go of your inhibitions and stuff. Um, but ultimately, like Stephen King found, it takes your eye off the game. You can, you, you know, you end up stop, stopping yourself from enjoying your own success or blocking yourself from having any. Ross, we never listen and go through the journey without understanding. <laughs> Sometimes, Patrick, I think you've got you've just got to go through it, haven't you? No matter what anyone would have told me, maybe I wouldn't have listened at that age. People tell me they don't trust me when I say I don't drink. So it's funny. Wow. Okay, no, I just don't bother anymore. Literally, clean eating, clean drinking, gym five times a week, be productive. I feel, you know, totally different lifestyle that I lead now, but so much better. I The thing for me is I never appreciated how good my body was designed to feel. So when I felt my body was all right and I felt I was feeling good, that would be a bad day for me now. You know, when I thought my energy levels were good back in the day when I was going out all the time, I was like, oh yeah, I probably feel all right. I just thought that was the norm. I didn't know what it was like to really feel good. And of course, you're only gonna get out of your body what you put into it. And when you're putting a load of shit into it, you're just gonna get shit out of it. So that's a lesson from Stephen King. Thanks Stephen King for giving us that lesson. Next up. Uh, who shall we have? Uh, let me see, who did I select? Da, da, da. Drum rolls, I think I've already told you, haven't I? James Woods, okay. Now, I wasn't familiar with James Woods um, until I Googled him and then recognized his face, but he was best known for roles in films like Once Upon a Time in America, Nixon and Salvador. David's not had a drink in 12 months and he's the fittest and healthiest he's been. Nice one, David, keep that up, you will love it. So yeah, James Woods, he was an Academy Award nominee and multiple Emmy and Golden Globe winning actor. So this guy knows his shit. Someone said to me the other day, I thought it was hilarious. There's a difference between knowing your shit and knowing you are shit. <laughs> Ross, are you gonna mention your Michael Jackson interview? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that in, uh, in a second, Patrick. I've already mentioned it a little bit. Here's James Woods' letter, guys. James Woods, he calls himself Jimmy. He says, dear Jimmy, don't change a thing, really. James Woods in Family Guy too, so funny, says Gary. Oh, I didn't know. So, dear Jimmy, don't change a thing, really. Just enjoy the fruits of life and take the hard knocks. One has no meaning without the other. Totally agree with that. You've been blessed with a simple trick to make the best of life. It's a Woods family secret. Treat everyone with respect and demand it of them as well. If someone abuses you more than once, you deserve it. Call someone in your family every day of your life. You may think it's, a t it's tedious to do so, but a time will come when you would give your life to make that call one more time. Hug your mother often and tell her how much you love her. Do good work and do it because it's a gift to the world. 
No matter how inconsequential others may feel about the value of your contribution, it's the giving that matters. The surprise here will be that the beneficiary who gains the most when you give is you. Be proud but humble. Be strong but caring. Listen more than you may be inclined to do. Talk less. And most importantly, call your brother on July the 26th, 2006 and tell him he must go to a different hospital. It's okay to fall, but not okay to stay on the ground. Cherish the dead you once loved so carelessly. They still live in your heart. So that's crazy, isn't it? I don't know about his brother. I have to look that up, or whether you guys can look it up. But he says, most importantly, yeah, call your brother on July the 26th, 2006, and tell him he must go to a different hospital. So I'm guessing something really, you know, something dodgy happened. Uh, on July the 26th, 2006. That's something I would love to go back and I told my old man, told my dad on June the 1st, 2006. He went to a hospital, needed to get transferred to the other one, and then he died going to the other one. So that shit, that would be a phone call we would all love to have made. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, what the, the key is with uh, with James's brother there. But there's some awesome, awesome... Uh, advice in there again just do good work you know for no expectation of getting anything back and the surprise here is that the beneficiary who gains the most out of doing that is going to be you people don't get that though they don't get that they just think they've got to hoard everything from themselves it's one of the biggest traits of the unsuccessful on the planet they hoard stuff they don't celebrate other people's successes you know they don't wish success on anybody else um, they don't collaborate it's just a recipe for unsuccess. Unsuccess? No, <laughs> not even a word. Just a recipe for failure. Uh, that's what that is, um, definitely. Also there, what I like is he says, if someone abuses you more than once, you deserve it. One way, guys, like the quickest way to, to have a better quality life is to raise your standards, but not only the standards that you demand from yourself, but the standards that you demand from other people. Um, and you've got to have high standards for yourself only quality people OQP only quality people Gina's here good evening Gina I love the fact Gina Gina Timberlake any relation to Justin it's a bit of a musical hero of mine if you know him tell him I'll uh, I'll do karaoke with him um, not that he'd want to um, so uh, so yeah that was James Woods's letter it's a great one we've got two more to look at one of them's very short actually but we'll look at Gene Hackman's first Let's get uh, let's get jeans up. Uh, da, 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 James Woods, we just looked at so many letters in here, guys. There's J.K. Rowling's. That's a good one. So yeah, Gene Hackman, uh, star of the French Connection, um, Get Shorty, Mississippi Burning, uh, The Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, he played Lex Luthor in the Superman films. Class actor, says uh, Patrick. So here's Gene. This is what he says. He says, look at there's a little picture of him there as well, looking cool. Um, it says, Gene, hey daddy -o, what's up? Here you've been hanging out at the post office talking to those jarhead recruiters about joining up. The Marines are a great outfit, but there's plenty of time, ploughboy. Finish school first. What's with mum talking to you after the picture show about Errol Flynn and acting? What do you think? In any case, if you decide to be an actor, you'd probably be banned from the neighbourhood. Coach Ave at school might be worth listening to. His advice about Hemingway reading the classics and applying oneself could be beneficial. If you decide to take up acting, maybe you should think about New York instead of Hollywood. It might be easier, ha ha. All the best, remember, there ain't no yellow brick road out there. The wizard, <laughs> Gene. And that last bit is why I chose it. There is no yellow brick road to follow in life or in the acting industry. You, you, know, you can't just follow the yellow brick road and you'll have success and you'll be a famous actor and you'll earn loads of money and be able to impact the world positively and do what you want with your life. There's no one way to do it, which is great. It's the beautiful thing about life, isn't there? Because you can get into, you know, put yourself in opportunities and positions of you know, potential success in many different ways. 
So I wanted to choose that letter really to say, you know, to tell people stop to compare, stop comparing your journey. Uh, Sophie, say good evening, Sophie. Stop comparing your journey to everyone else's. And if someone else has done it that way and it worked for them, by all means give it a go. But if it doesn't, don't worry about it. There's a million other ways. Exactly, 50% is up to you, says Patrick. Um, New York instead of LA. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's um, there's masses and masses of opportunity in New York. You know what? Any developed city in the world, there is opportunity. Someone was having a, having a go the other day, going, "Oh, you know, like I just uh, I really struggle because you know there's no opportunity you know out there for me to get money, or you know I want to start a business, but you know how do I get money? I want to start a play. How do I get money? I want to do a short film. How do I get money? 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 And they have these all these excuses around money. Um, and um, is the full episode going to be on the site? What we talk, what we talk, what we're talking about there? I'll, I'll, I'll address that in a sec. Um, there will be full episodes of something on the site. What are we talking about? If there's a preview of it somewhere, there'll be a full episode definitely. But yeah, all this limiting beliefs around opportunity and money. And I was like, look, that it has never been easier, guys, today, to raise money for a business, for a play, for a short film, for your career, for whatever it is. And if you're like, you know, in, we're in 2016 now, if, if you lived in like 1960, if your 1960 year old self could see you in 2016 complaining about money and how hard it is to get money and fund your career and that kind of thing, promise you, he or she would punch you smack bang in the face. So straight up, Patrick says, crowdfunding projects are gonna do it, exactly. You know, there are so many platforms out there. Indiegogo, um, you know, uh, Kickstarter. If you want to start a business, there's like angel list, angel investors. There are people out there, if your shit is good enough, if your ideas are good enough, if your writing is good enough, and you've got the dedication, you can get whatever you want. Patrick says it was difficult years ago. Yes, it was. But the, the point is today, it is easier than ever. And like, you know, like Gene says, there's no yellow bit road. Make your own, lay your own paving stones, your own yellow bit road. If you have the talent and you work hard enough, even if you don't have the talent, you know, even if you just can work hard enough and you want it bad enough, you can get what you want if you get out of your head, stop blocking yourself and get into your heart. Um, but yeah, honestly, your 1960 year old self, if you existed back then, would just give you a left hook to the jaw if they saw you complain about how hard it is to get money these days. It was hard in the 60s, the 70s. That's when it was difficult to get money. You know, earlier than that, very difficult to get money. Today, it's very, very easy. Don't have limiting beliefs around what you can do and what you can't do because of funding and that sort of stuff. Find a way, lay your yellow brick road. So thanks, Gene Hackman, for that little tip. And then the last one, Alan Rickman, who's a, uh, who was a fan of, of Alan. Great actor, loved him. Uh, Piers Morgan's letters in here. I'm not going to read Piers's out. I just saw that. That's quite a good one. Right. Alan's is super, super short, guys. It's this. And you might have this attitude as well, you know. And this is this this comes back into what we were saying before and Fanny said before. You've got to experience stuff sometimes, haven't you? You know. Sexiest voice in the industry, says Fanny. Except for mine, uh, mine uh, there, you know. No, no he's, he's definitely had a better voice than mine. So Alan says he was great says David. Uh, no, he really, really was. Alan says this, he says, Dear me, if in future years anyone asks you to give advice to your 16-year-old self, don't. Make your own unique messes and then work your own way out of them. See ya, Alan Rickman. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, what we said before is probably very true, guys. Sometimes people can give you all the advice in the world and then you um, you don't take it on board, do you? Some of the stuff my dad used to say to me and things like that, I'd be like, whatever, mate, you know, I'm 19. I, I know how the world works. And I look back now and go, God, he was so right. We just turn into our parents a little bit, don't we, I think, um, as we go through life. But that was, uh, that was an interesting one. Um, sometimes you just got to make your own mistakes and figure it out for yourself. However, what I want to do now, guys, is give you lot the opportunity to get involved with something that I am excited about. And Well, it won't work if you don't get involved. Ultimately, I'll just be a loner on my own. I want to create an ebook 
very similar to this, but I want it to be from you guys. Actors in the industry, in the acting industry, um, either giving life advice or acting industry advice, things that you wished you knew when you were 16 years old. Even if you're 17 and you're watching this, I don't care, you've got a lot of knowledge in the last year that you need, you, know, you need to get out and give to other people. We don't have the luxury of giving our 16 year old selves that advice. So let's do something good and positive in the world, give without receiving, give without any expectation, by putting that advice out there for other people to benefit from. So here's what I want you guys to do. I'd like you to write a letter to your 16 year old self up to 600 words. It can be super short like Alan's, or it can be up to 600 words, you know, whatever. And then I'm gonna collate all of those letters, I'm gonna create an ebook, and then we're gonna flood the industry with it and try and give it to as many people as we possibly can for them to read and to benefit from all of our wisdom over the years. We probably have a combined knowledge literally in the thousands of years between us all. Well, absolutely within the thousands of years. Um, tens of thousands of years potentially if a lot of people in the community get involved. Now to do that, it's all set up and very easy. I recorded a video before that I'm going to start promoting tomorrow but you guys can get access to all of this early because I want you to be involved early for supporting this from the start. If you go to www.actonthis.tv forward slash dear 16 and that's one six so the numbers and I'm not spelling it out um, dear one six. So actonthis.tv forward slash dear16. David said he likes that a lot. I think it's awesome. I can't I can't wait to hear what people you know about people's lives. This is why I do this. I absolutely love it. And you will see a video on there that kind of tells you a little bit more about it. And then underneath that will be a form. You put your name, your email address. There's a box that will accept up to um, 600 uh, words in that box. And then you know what? I think I've just—I think I've just realised I've set it to 600 characters. I'm going to change that after this. It's 600 words we need, not 600 characters. And uh, and yeah, you can write your letter in there, up to 600 words. You can upload your headshot because I'll put your headshot and credit you in the book. Um, you know, with uh, with that, it can be an acting headshot, or it could be like a funny picture of yourself as a kid. You know, or when you were 16, something like that. Um, and then I'll collate that over the next few weeks, and then we'll aim to publish that in around about a month. You know, month's time. Uh, once everyone's had time to do that. Don't overthink it. Write as like a stream of consciousness. You know, don't think too much about it. Um, I'm sure you've all got things in your head already that you're like, God, I wish I knew that. I wish I'd have said that. I wish, you know, I could have done this. Um, it can be life advice, like I say, general stuff, funny stuff, um, sad stuff, you know, just whatever. Um, and acting industry related stuff as well. Um, but it, I just think it'd be really nice because like, like um, was it Gene said, yeah, there's no yellow brick road. So it's interesting to hear about everyone's journey and the road that they've been on, regardless of whether you're 17 now or 77 or 107. Um, I think it'd just be a really, really cool thing to do. So www.actonthis.tv forward slash dear 16. Um, and then we'll start using the hashtag as well on Twitter, dear 16 as well. We'll try and spread the word. Uh, you know, share that page out, and we'll just try and get it out to as many people as possible. I'm going to send it out to the email list from Acts on This tomorrow. We'll put it in the Facebook group. If you're an actor and you're not part of the Facebook group, please come and join as well. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Act on This TV. Um, come and join the group. We've got 2,300 uh, actors in there so far. It's growing by about 50, 100 every single day. And uh, so uh, it's a super supportive community no negative Nancy's in there. It's all positive, inspiring, motivating stuff. We don't, we don't entertain any negativity at all. Um, so it's, you know, it's a really great group. If you, uh, if you want to you know, be more productive, come and join it. Um, so let me know, are you up for that as well? Or what? Give me some hearts if, you wanna, you know, if you're up for writing your, uh, your own Dear 16 letter. Um, I think it'll be really cool. I look forward to reading it. The hearts are flying through. Um, I just think it's nice, isn't it, you know, to share your experience with the world. And if you've never been published in a book before, I'm gonna publish you in a book and then you will live on forever. I mean, that's, that's cool, isn't it, when you think about it. Future generations, thank you for writing that letter because they may find it five, 10 years down the line, 50 years down the line when we're no longer here. I, I, hopefully I'll be here in 50 years time. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, future generations will benefit from 
your advice. It would be such a shame to go to the grave with all that cool knowledge in your head. Not that you're going to go there anytime soon, but you know, it would be uh, a shame to, to just leave that without, you know, uh, letting it impact other people. So, uh, so that's great. I really look forward to, to reading those. Please check it out. Act on this.tv forward slash dear 16. I'm going to be back on Monday with a motivation of mind hacks periscope. Don't know what it's going to be on yet, but it will be something to do with lovely idea, says Gina. Thanks, Gina. Uh, it'll be something to do with uh, motivation and mind hacks, ways to scientifically hack your, your brain, your mind, your body to be more productive, more motivated, um, you know, feel better, get more done. Um, it'll be something that you won't want to miss, so don't miss it. Um, please uh, subscribe, you know, uh, follow me on Periscope so you don't miss anything. Ross, the Michael Jackson interview. Uh, I will talk about that now, yeah. Great, thanks Ross, looking forward to sharing with you all my advice to 16 me, says Christos. Awesome. Yeah, so I, um, with me and Chris Stone, went and we interviewed casting director Michael Jackson from Beverly Keogh Casting. Um, I mentioned at the start of this scope, we did that on Monday night on the 7th at Cool Bar in Media City UK here in Manchester, the heart of TV land up here. And it was a really honest, open, frank interview with Michael. I've known him a lot of years now, so I can be super honest with him, super open. We covered lots of things on there, including um, how new talent can get seen by high profile casting directors, what's stopping high profile casting directors from bringing in new talent, um, you know, mistakes actors are making time and time again. We talk a lot about confidence, the lack, and I see it all the time, it's the reason. I created a, a confidence insulation, science backs confidence insulation program earlier this year called Bulletproof Factor. Go to bulletproofactor.com. I'm going to launch the next intake for that um, very, very soon. Um, he sees it time and time again on a daily basis lack of self confidence. Even though actors have the training, the talent, they don't walk in the room like they feel they deserve the job. What about talent at a certain age? Are they being overlooked? Um, no, absolutely not, uh, Patrick. We spoke about you know opportunities for for everybody i mean that would come down to who's right in parts for what age groups you know it's definitely not a matter of going it's ever too late for anybody because if you look at what's on tv you're going to see people of all ages in all different generations of their you know of, of life um so no but the, the the key to it is the key to the whole thing really the whole interview really was it's going to be titled your audition is our audition and it's how michael sees every audition as his audition as well, because as much as you might not know, casting directors don't just get jobs for nothing. They have a track record and they won't be asked to cast for something of high profile if the last job they cast of high profile wasn't very good or they were bringing people in who weren't very good. So every time you get brought in for an audition, Michael is relying on you to be good, otherwise he looks shit if you're shit. So his aud your audition is his audition. Um, ultimately so it's about taking solace in the fact that if you're invited in he thinks you can do the role don't walk in there with your tail between your legs looking sheepish like you're shit in your pants otherwise you ain't gonna get it and he won't want to bring you in again because you're just you know you're letting him down he always gives people a second chance if you're having a bad day but he won't give you more than that um, glad you asked honest questions looking forward to it says Nina yeah honestly we just spoke dead frank honest I didn't want to cover all the boring shit Nina we've covered before like what should a showreel be? What should a headshot be? I've asked that hundreds of times. This was things, you know, real questions like how, you know, how the hell can an actor new to the industry get on your favourite list? How do they do it? What can they do for you? You know, what can they bring to the audition so you see them again? What, what can they do so you'll never see them again? What are people doing so you'll never see them again? And ultimately, oh, some of the mistakes are so basic. He just wants people. And I can't believe he struggles with this. He just wants people to come in, deliver their, he says, because most drama auditions, the one scene, two scenes, you might have eight to 20 lines. Deliver your lines without holding onto a piece of paper, shaking. Get up, say thank you, walk out without tripping up. Simple as that. He doesn't see it enough. He sees people walking in, trembling with their pages. Head down, looking at the lines, even though they were sent in the night before, they've got eight lines to learn. Learn your fucking lines. How the hell do they get seen in the first place? Um, well, we talk about that as well. Yeah, absolutely, we talk about that. And, um, and ultimately, that's about the action that you're taking. And I kind of agree. If you really, 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 really want to get seen, you'll do enough to get seen. You'll go out and you'll start putting things on. You'll be inviting people to stuff. You'll go to, if you desperately want to, you know, Anna, good evening, if you desperately want to see a certain casting director, 
and you know that they always visit, say Manchester Gas Directors always visit something at the Royal Exchange, something like that. Do what you need to do to get yourself a part in something at the Royal Exchange where they can see you. Uh, how long are you given to learn those lines? Uh, if you get them, most high profile drama, uh, because of the nature, if it's, if it's um, confidential, sometimes Patrick it will be the night before. But you know what? It takes you an hour to, to read a script if it's an hour long drama. It's roughly 60 pages, a minute a page. Um, if you're having eight hours sleep, you've got no excuse. Get seven hours sleep. You can survive. Read the script. The amount of people who go in having not read the whole script, only read their eight lines, not knowing how the rest of the script can inform their character. Um, it's really disappointing. People don't obviously want to be an actor as much as they, they think they do. They love the idea of being an actor, but they don't want to put any work in. Really difficult to judge performance if an actor's still looking at scripts. Totally, Gary, absolutely. If your head is down in your script, you know, how can you, you, know, how can you, you perform? You can't, you're very, very limited. Um, do what you need to do to learn the lines. Stay up, get five hours sleep. Um, but if you really want it, you'll do it. If you don't want it, you'll, you'll well, it's this and it, it's that, that thing. If you really want it, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. How much you really want it? Uh, you know, I know, and I include myself in this, we all could be doing more to get what we want out of our lives and careers. We could, because there's no limit to how much you can do. And I class myself in that category as well. I could be doing more. Um, you all, I promise you, could be doing more. Um, and it's about actions. It is about doing it, not talking about it. Um, but we, we go into quite a lot of depth on that. It's an hour and 17, an hour and 18 minutes long, the interview, Michael. It'll be online on the last Friday of this month. I suggest everybody who, uh, who's watching this watches that because um, you'll get at least something out of it that will, uh, that will click or will inspire you or just motivate you to do something and take some action immediately after watching it. I hope anyway, that's the, you know, that's, that's the, the desired result that I, uh, I have with these things. So, uh, so yeah, look forward to that. But yeah, for now, Dear 16, that's on this.tv forward slash Dear 16. Get over there, write your letter over the next few days. Can't wait to uh, read them and, uh, and publish them eventually. So thanks for spending some time with me. If you're watching this on the replay, appreciate you uh, for, uh, for spending all this time. Uh, cheers, David. He says, excellent, can't wait. Patrick says, yes, with a million, yet, with a million S's. <laughs> um, but yeah, do that, guys. Um, and, and like I say, really look forward to seeing what you guys uh, put across. So I'm going to go and um, make sure you get my Five to Thrive podcast on iTunes this Friday as well. There's already 16 episodes up there. Just search for Act on This TV, all one word, in the iTunes store. Subscribe to the podcast. It's completely free. And they are like five to ten minute episodes every week that will inspire, enrich, motivate you, you know, in your life as well. Similar to these little periscopes, but mini versions. Thanks, Christos. Appreciate you. If you subscribe to the, pod, uh, the podcast as well, leave a review. I need some reviews. I've only got nine reviews on there. Please leave a review if you, uh, if you do listen regularly um, and tweet me your thoughts at Ross A. Grant or at Act on this TV. Um, right. Enjoy yourselves, guys. It's quarter to 11. I'm going to bed up early in the morning. Get out there in the morning. Take action. Cheers, Nina. Uh, thanks Gina, Nina and Gina. Have a great day tomorrow yourself. Um, yeah, get out there guys. Do something great. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.